Gold here, Oxygen Forensics, and uh, there's still uh, a few people still showing up, but I know those who have been waiting actually uh, have shown up uh, on time. It uh, We will just begin. Uh, so this uh, will be recorded, uh, hopefully, so that uh, if uh, you guys have to leave or some people that were not able to attend, you'll be able to view it at, uh, at a later date. So uh, hopefully everything is uh, going well with you. I'm just going to fire this back up. So hopefully you guys can, uh, can see the screen. What I would uh, also um, ask you guys to do as well um, is, if you can, uh, I'm going to uh, make sure that I, uh, I uh, make the opportunity for people to ask questions. Um, and there's a little question box that you might have. Uh, I will keep it muted uh, during this uh, during this session, uh, just because with this many people, uh, there's quite uh, enough. If you want to ask a question, um, or uh, I know that there's some people raising their hands, if you can, uh, just uh, put it into the question box, and I'll try to get to those. Say the last 10 minutes, hopefully, um, or five minutes, I'll have time to go through some of the questions uh, as they uh, not necessarily as they come in. Uh, but uh, towards the end of the end of the broadcast. So if you can, please uh, try and uh, uh, and make sure that you have the have the information. Uh, write it straight away into the question box as you think of it, and uh, then I'll make sure that I get to it. Uh, so if I could have uh, just someone uh, on there, hopefully uh, it shows that uh, that my audio is good. So uh, I, I'm. I'm trusting, obviously, the technology that audio is good. Uh, so, like I said, uh, I will make sure that I will have uh, um, the question box open so that if you guys do have questions, like I said, I'll jump to that towards the end um, of it because, again, I'm sure that you guys will have questions and with the large number that we have in this uh, in this presentation, I. You know, I, I can't stop as as we're going through there. I'm only given an hour, and if you guys have seen me speak before, uh, an hour is kind of difficult to uh, uh, for me sometimes to to keep up with. But so we'll go through some, uh, you know, some obviously some slides, but then we'll get into the product as well. Uh, show you some of the, uh, uh, you know, some of the features that I really like. Uh, really diving into into that data. So again, uh, this is uh, deep diving for forensic gold. And uh, I'm Lee Reaver. I'm the COO at uh, Oxygen Forensics Inc. And uh, like I said, we'll make sure that if there are some some questions, I will get to as many as I can at the end of the presentation. Okay. So as we're going through this uh, again, just throw it into the question box. So just a little bit about um, uh, you know if we have uh, with with the company itself. Um, uh, Oxygen, it was, it's been, was formed in, uh, in 2000. In 2015, obviously, U.S. company Oxygen Forensic Inc. is open in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, the best part about it, we have users across the globe. Uh, and uh, everywhere that I, uh, that I go in and either speak uh, in, uh, uh, again, across the world, uh, people are utilizing Oxygen Forensic products uh, for their mobile forensic needs. And uh, it, it, it is quite uh, quite wonderful. But again, they're all over the world, as uh, as I'm sure that are represented within this within this web webinar. Uh, a lot of people uh, always uh, speak. Well, you know, I mean, uh, is it uh, is it utilized? Who's using it uh, primarily? And if, if speaking in the U.S. government, uh, uh, almost every branch uh, in the U.S. government, as well as uh, we call it with its. Uh, as a computer analysis response team or CART certified being used in the most sensitive cases that we would have at least in the US. So it's used uh, again by the uh, majority of law enforcement throughout the, throughout the world uh, but now we're finding it and uh, uh, especially in discovery needs in a lot of the large corporations um, across the world as well because as you guys all know that mobile devices are, are, are Really, they're they're not going anywhere, right? Uh, that they're utilized in uh, not only uh, crimes, uh, but uh, you know our personal lives and uh, and in the corporate side, in the corporate world, especially when we start talking about e-discovery needs. 
it's it's also involved there uh, as well. So we're seeing in, in about everything that uh, you have a zero and a one from a mobile device, oxygen forensics, uh, our, our tools are being utilized. So it's, it, it's quite nice. Um, so when when I when, when I talk about uh, especially we get to come to sign the support that we have you know it's always a numbers game uh, that you're playing and so you know as the slide comes up with a 13,000 plus mobile devices via live acquisition and I and I make that just as a term that we say well that we support that but honestly it's way more uh, than that because uh, if you guys know that uh, you know there's over 13,000 Android devices anyway uh, you know being that I can pretty much have it on HEC, Huawei, ZTE, uh, LG, Samsung well not a lot of people are with the Samsung 7s now it's just because of the news but um, obviously are w there are many many Android devices and again like I said they estimated over 13,000 Oxygen Forensic supports those devices anyway, even if we do not have the profile that is, uh, that is built in, uh, be because obviously it's based on with the operating system. What's so nice, uh, especially about the support uh, in, in our products, is the ability to actually import images uh, from other tools. Uh, if you're util utilizing other computer friends, or excuse me, uh, mobile forensic tools, uh, whether it be uh, MSAB, Celebrite, other tools, you're able to actually import their images, which allows you to uncover additional information that either hasn't built, been uh, built into that tool or uh, just that because we have that uh, robust support for those different types of files. So again, like you guys all know, uh, unfortunately it comes to a multiple tool situation because there's really not a tool that's going to be supporting 100% uh, of the mobile devices out there. Uh, there's just too many of them, there's too many proto, uh, protocols or too many profiles uh, to actually support everything out there. But again, with the capability of actually bringing in images, that kind of takes the device out of it and it just comes down to a file system which um, obviously our tools do a fantastic job in that I will show you a lot of the information contained within the file system. Um, we talk about the uh, support for physical acquisitions. Um, of, uh, of Android devices, uh, which is which e each release is uh, becomes better. Uh, when we start talking about temporary routes or shell routing uh, with the device itself, obtain, uh, obtaining that user uh, data partition, uh, we have that uh, that ability with those devices. Also uh, built in is with the password bypass, meaning that uh, if there is a uh, a password gesture biometrics on say an Android, allowing uh, to uh, bypass that and uh, achieve a full physical on those devices. Uh, so again, it's a cat and mouse game. Really, when we start talking about uh, mobile devices and the Android side, and be able to utilize this type of technology. Um, but again, our products continue to uh, innovate and, uh, and and bring to uh, the user. The ability on the on the most common devices that uh, that are seen, especially into the Samsung side, LG side as well, with the most current Galaxy versions of Samsung uh, being supported, uh, if it is indeed still locked and you do not have ability for ADB, uh, we can still uh, achieve a physical uh, collection on those devices. And also, I I, I call about uh, invasive images. Invasive images, um, that's a term that I, that, that, that I utilize for, say, a physical collection when uh, destruction or the, the device uh, could be compromised. In, 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 and by compromised, I, I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, either if you're using JTAG, uh, you know, ISP, uh, or chip off, you know, there is, because either you're removing the back of the phone or you're actually um, uh, removing the NINT, uh, that becomes an issue. Uh, right, because you're not going to be able to put, especially in the chip off side, uh, the device back together. But uh, knowing that, and knowing that, uh, especially on locked bootloaders, on devices that we need to support the uh, JTAG ASP, those, that type of route, being able to now uh, bring those images into Oxygen uh, Forensic Detective uh, and allow uh, the now the examiner, the expert, uh, to uh, parse and decode that information is enormous, right? Because 
you know, all is lost, you would think, uh, if the device is either, uh, say, locked in that, uh, say, the bootloader's locked, there's no tool out there that's able to actually bypass that via, say, USB connection recovery or download mode. But utilizing those methods, we see that, obviously, as a need to be able to decode and parse those images. So we support that with both Android, um, some BB10 device, as well as uh, Windows Phone 8. You can bring those images in and allow the uh, user to now uncover that digital gold that uh, is contained within the uh, within that file system and the structure that uh, we wind up uh, build, rebuilding. Now, if we look at uh, really the big thing that uh, that a lot of people are talking about, and and we'll talk about this more uh, within this talk, is going to be with our cloud extraction because you have to have that and uh, understanding in, in today's uh, in, in today's environment especially on the mobile devices uh, applications that are with un, in the device either if I just have a, a standard we would call it a file system logical extraction uh, or ADB backup or say iTunes extraction uh, where the databases just are not uh, available to you unless you have uh, say root on the device on an Android device um, or able to uh, uh, receive, say, a physical, uh, obtaining those uh, those database files can be difficult. But so now looking at, say, the additional storage locations that uh, that mobile devices are using, along with our uh, in, on the cloud, uh, bringing that into a tool like Oxygen Forensic Detective, that's now adding that additional support uh, for the uh, for the expert is tremendous. Uh, because, again, like I said, uh, the data, if it's stored, um, say, off the device, you still have that ability uh, to uncover uh, that information. So, again, uh, it, it's, I think that that's, uh, especially with, uh, uh, at, at Oxygen, is the innovation, uh, the responding to uh, the needs and really providing solutions to the problems that are there today is uh, really one of the benefits, and that's what, you know, we will talk about as we move in uh, to uh, to this presentation. So now let's talk about some of the apps and really about app support because that's where we we really need to understand. Because you guys all know that uh, just think about your communication, your communication trends. Um, you know, everyone is utilizing third-party uh, uh, mobile applications to communicate today. Right? No longer are we simply using just email or SMS and MMS. It really comes down to the third-party apps. And that's not just for us as everyday users, but that comes down to those people that we might be investigating, those people that um, in the law enforcement side, those groups that are forming um, coups, those groups that are forming uh, a terrorist attack. We really have to think about those applications. So we look at the support that we have that's built in with over 2,000 supported applications, 2,000 plus really supported applications um, on there. And then when we start talking about over 300 unique apps, it really becomes a game, right? Um, when we start talking about 2,000 plus, uh, that just has to do obviously with version numbers of different apps. But when we talk about unique apps, that's a very um, important number. Uh, because that's the actual app that is supported. Now, as we get and progress during the presentation, uh, it's just a drop in the bucket. But um, to be able to go in and have over 300 uh, uh, applications or unique apps that are supported to help in the processing of that third-party information and communication is tremendous. Um, not only is that uh, displaying the data, the logical data within, say, a SQLite database, a JSON string, XML, uh, however, it's formatted within that uh, for that app. Uh, now it's recovering the information, uh, say deleted data, uh, say from the free page area um, of the uh, main database from the right ahead log, bringing that information in and presenting that to you automated uh, again is extremely important. Um, but you know, as we progress again in this, uh, we'll, we'll talk about really. Um, you know, these are produced by man uh, and, and, and with the support of the apps, but 
really quite honestly, in today's mobile forensic investigations, there's, there needs to be more. There needs to be more involvement by actually the expert. But what's great um, is the automated date and time uh, interpretation when we start talking about, say, Android devices, when they're represented by milliseconds, microseconds, Unix time, um, uh, say Chrome, which is just the, if you have a Java time, uh, you have all of these different types and formats. When you start talking about Mac or OS X um, or uh, just the standard Unix, it's, there's a lot of di different representations of dates and times, really. Remember the epoch, right? Second sense, X so that you have this information. But, hey, I remember always having to try to automate that, put Bill in an you know, Excel spreadsheet and trying to say second sense and trying to figure out exactly going from the date that I know and uh, you know, reversing that down to seconds and, and trying to figure out exactly what the epoch. I mean, going back to the MFI days when we're doing, say, we call the GPS, all the different uh, GPS time that you would have. You know, BlackBerry would have its own time. Uh, so really breaking that down was a lot of work. Obviously, uh, building a tool not only for the, with the app support, because as an app developer, I can decide what I'm going to utilize um, within uh, my app of how I'm going to keep time, right? Uh, and when those, when those really come up, it does take a lot of work, um, but now having a, a, a robust uh, tool, Oxygen Forensic Detective, allow us to go and interpret those dates and times. But now it really comes down to, um, you know, especially the, the, the tools that are out there now, um, we have, or excuse me, the apps that, uh, you know, they're, util they're utilizing encryption, right? Uh, we start talking about WhatsApp. We start talking about Snapchat. Um, we have all of these different types of apps. Um, you know, when uh, uh, we have three, we, there's so many out there that they want to encrypt that data. Again, for personal protection of, say, the user and the user data, um, either it's point to point or it's stored within the SQLite database in an encrypted state, really coming down to solving that problem. I think is what what brings the innovation to the oxygen tools um, and uncovering that information and presenting that to the expert is is quite amazing because it's not only just going and presenting the information but it's actually decrypting that data decoding that information and presenting it to the expert is, is quite uh, is quite amazing but again we'll see more and more of these, uh, these third-party apps that are going to be encrypting the data. And when they start encrypting the data, again, it makes it more difficult for, uh, say, the mobile forensic tool to uncover that. Because, again, that is some R&D, but that's, I think, the strongest point that uh, I, I can make, especially for the company. Now, if we look as well, again, we support a lot of unique apps. But, uh, you know, as we talk about and uh, the number of apps that are out there, that becomes an issue. So, again, building into uh, uh, the tool, uh, the ability to give you the expert, uh, the availability to review that information, to see the information as it is within the SQLite database or even a property list with our built-in SQLite viewer and property list. It allows you to not only go in and view the information from the tables, but also convert that uh, say the, the, the column uh, to UTF-8 or convert um, the information, you interpret the date and time, but now convert the entire column so that you can see the information, you can present that information in an investigative report even if the application is not directly supported within the app to be decoded. Um, so again, allowing you, and we'll look at that as, as say a case study as we're going and looking at the tool live. So again, extremely important. but but really, how do we, as a, uh, as a company, as Oxygen Forensics and Oxygen Forensic Detective, attack really the problem of the, the applications uh, that are out there? I think it comes down to a couple of things. One, being able to go in and search across the entire device image, uh, the entire case with, say, multiple devices, or across multiple cases to identify information. So being able to have a global search function where you can go and search via regular expression, where you can search via text, you can do numbers, and most importantly, especially in the law enforcement side, formulating an attack based upon hashes. 
being able to go and import a say a hash list um, that you have um, with you know thousands of of known say CP that you're able to go in and import that information um, the hash list and be able to have that you be immediately notified within either the watch list or even running a keyword um, list search with imported keyword list that runs um, all the time and when uh, running your uh, uh, importing or the parsing of the data so that you're immediately notified for critical information based upon a hash. Uh, that's, that's extremely important to have built within, uh, within a tool. So performing a live search within files as well, which is important because you know some tools be able to do searching, but it only searches across the database. Um, so not only can we search across the database within Oxygen Forensic Detective, but we're able to go and search within the files. And why is that important? Because if you're looking for a certain keyword, if you're looking for an email address, if you're looking for credit card numbers, if you're looking for information that, say, isn't supported and decoded and parsed by the tool, you should hope you can still find it. Because once you go in and do a search across within the files, you can now uncover and see, oh, you know what? It's actually within this database file. It's not directly supported, but you know what? I have the SQLite viewer that I can now go and review that information. I can see the information that's in there. I can now uncover that data and support that app by utilizing built-in tools, right? By going and digging deeper within the application because just because it's not directly supported by a tool, you still have the ability, you still have the ability to go in and find that information within the application itself. Okay? So you must make sure that you have and you can get that information and you can have it available um, even though it's not directly supported, which again, it all comes down to being able to perform that search. Now you're able to go in and uh, get that information uh, still even if it isn't supported. Again, now, you, just because you can search, now, every, every um, uh, examination that you're going to do, I would say the majority that you're going to do, have to do with not just a single device, but multiple devices. You go to a scene or someone brings uh, mobile devices to you, it's typically not just a single device, it's multiples, an Android, iOS, uh, multiple Android devices, multiple iOS devices that were either uh, you know received at a, at a search warrant at a scene that you have to process those. Now, no longer should you be processing and just saying, you know what, I'm going to do one at a time and I'm going to try to print a report or I'm going to try to remember this information that I have. I'm going to go and create some search, um, uh, some search information that we have. Um, so really what it comes down to is how can I go in and find out who the most important people are across the devices, the most important application across the devices, what date and times are these people meeting each other, what locations are these people meeting each other at. So being able to now run the analytics across all of these devices now is, is critical. And built into obviously Oxygen Forensic Detective are analytical tools that 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 prove that you can prove via timelines that you can do the aggregated contacts, being able to do and run social graphs um, across multiple identify immediately who the most common contacts are, so that you can start the investigation on on say that individual that might not be part of this of this group. Being able to map out the relationships that are involved again is extremely critical in today's investigations. It's no longer just looking for say communication that you're having, um, uh, but now it's looking who knows who, who's communicating with who, who's the major operator for all of these people and these devices. So now this is what is what is needed um, within a mobile forensic tool. And again, Oxygen Forensics um, allows you to um, uh, to see this information visually, but also look into that information and identify that that communication or those locations that they might have been um, in this area. Then again, we start talking about off-device storage. 
Um, so if we're talking about, say, SD cards that, uh, that might be located at a scene um, or within a device or within another device, um, being able to go and do a full physical within the Oxygen Forensic Detective of that, um, of that media card, being able to uncover deleted files, being able to uncover deleted information is available. But also I talk about the cloud storage again, is that being able to now go in and pull that information from the cloud utilizing a built-in cloud extractor, include that into the case, now you can do analytics across the cloud, and now you can go ahead and do um, across the cloud, across the device, across all devices, now I'm going and doing the an analytics. So I now put those into the same case that I have, the actual physical devices or the cloud information, so I get a complete picture of not only the device, but all of the data that might be involved. So the problem really has to do with so all of the data, right? How can I go in and fine tune the information? And how can I go in and take all the information from offsite storage from multiple devices into one area? And that's really what we can deliver with Oxygen Forensic Detective. Okay, so looking again at the additional information that we have, so we talk about today's communication that I've mentioned a couple of times. That not only calls, people don't want, don't use their standard phone to use, or, or excuse me, their phone line to make calls. They're using Google Voice, they're using Skype, they're using Viber, they're using WhatsApp to, to have this good, different communication. And when I go and communicate with someone via chat, we're talking about WhatsApp, Tick Messenger, Telegram, so many of those applications that are available out there. And we start talking about the different social networks that we have. Many, many different from QQ, WeChat, um, yeah, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook Messenger, you have all of this, inf people, there's so many different social networks out there that people are using to communicate in there. What we'll touch on today in the live, um, the live demonstration is really web browsers because there's a critical source within the web browsers that uh, everyone, I, I would say, oh, well, hopefully you're not missing, but I would say the majority of you are not looking into diving for that type of gold because within web browsers, there is, there is some critical information that mobile device tools are not, say, automating and parsing out simply because of the, of the issues or the, say, the variables that are involved within that, okay? But I think what's so important and critical is that we as experts, especially when we're doing our um, uh, examinations, are looking into games. Games are, to, are today's new chat area for not playing a game but utilizing those to hide from law enforcement because they know what's supported. Okay, these tools support WhatsApp. They support all of these different types of tools, but you know what? How can we go and communicate under the radar that say a tool doesn't support it? Why don't I go use a game? Why don't I go use this game? I have this game installed. I know that there's a chat function of it. I'm not going to play the game, but you know what? I'm going to communicate with my other, uh, say, members of my group through this particular application because I know that it's not automated. But see, that information is available to you within Oxygen Forensic Detective. Again, remember I talked about performing searches. If you're looking for certain information, search within files, and now you have the ability to go in and uncover this plot that was, that was built into a clash of kings was built into this where I can perform these different types of communication or check words with friends those types of uh, of games where you can go and communicate and chat with say other users all I simply have to do is create a user account have the app and now they know my user account we can communicate via chat within a game so now looking at that type of communication um, that's where a lot of nefarious um, uh, say information is going to be located. So please, when we start looking and we start talking about the, this pres presentation, we need to make sure that we are looking at and looking in the, uh, the information of this. Okay? Okay, great. So still moving on, still moving on that we have here. Um, today, so we start talking about storage. Built with an oxygen forensic detective is an extremely robust 
um, cloud extractor. Uh, our cloud extractor is built into the product, and there's so many formats, especially with the Google side of it. Anything Google, as long as I have username, password, or token, um, I can go and conduct an extraction from the cloud um, utilizing that information. Um, just be able to go now and include that in the case. So can, we continue to build in new cloud um, uh, cloud formats or containers that we can go in and pull that information out. Uh, and again, built in to our Oxygen Forensic Detective is the uh, cloud extractor, which is going to uh, most certainly, most certainly help in your cases that you're going to be involved in as the device, uh, or excuse me, as the app start utilizing cloud storage more and more. Um, Google being the number one of bringing and, and pushing up a lot of the information, a lot of the data that is uh, that is out there. Okay. Now, if we start looking as well, these are just some statistics that I want you to talk to kind of think about. If we look about this as of June 2016, there are over 2 million apps on the Apple Store. All right, now we look at uh, Google Play, we had 2.2. Now, these are available. Now we look at the others, say uh, Amazon, the Windows Store, and Blackberry, 2.1 million. Right, so we have these statistics that uh, that I grabbed off here. Now these are the apps that are available, okay? And so if we do the math, we're looking at that what about 6.3 million um, apps that are available. That's a lot, right? That's a ton. But now let's look at this next statistic, and we start looking at about today's app supports. So we look at, and I'm and I'm talking across the uh, across the tools. The available apps are approximately 6.3 million, and the apps that are supported within a mobile forensic tool, and I just said approximately 400 um, apps. So we look at that statistic, right? Of the apps supported versus the, versus the apps available, it's quite astounding, right? If we start looking at the probabilities. We started looking at the probabilities because I like kind of numbers and statistics. If we look at, say, the probability of say the apps to the apps available to the supported apps, remember I said 6.3 to 4. We start looking at it 0. 0.00006, or roughly 0.006% of the apps available are supported by a mobile forensic tool. Okay, so again, we look at the reality side of it. You're actually more likely to actually drop your smartphone in the toilet, right? To run into or say utilizing, or, or you're, you're more likely to do that than uh, run into obviously a, uh, uh, one of these or the supported. Now, I bring that up as kind of a funny on the probability side, but the enormous or the number of apps that are actually out and available um, to the users that they can use versus the ones that are supported means you have to work hard. You have to work extremely hard because it's quite likely that you're going to be investigating an app that might not be directly supported. But if I start looking at some of the realistic probabilities, if we look at Oxygen, we support almost 88%, we'll say 87% um, of the most popular apps um, that are out there. If you look at the popular apps that are listed out, Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, Pandora, you have Instagram, you have Apple Maps, you have all of those Pokemon Go, we support that. 13 out of the 15 of the most popular apps, so we look at about 87%, we're supported by Oxygen Forensic Detective. That's really how we have to concentrate in is those apps that are, say, the most popular, that are utilized, but again, we still run into the probability issue like everyone else of an app that might not be directly supported for decoding, what do we do? Right, that is where we run into and we have some of the issues. But again, realistically, we support again almost uh, uh, eight, well 87 percent of the most popular apps, which again um, leads credence to the innovation that we have of targeting the most popular apps that are out around the globe and attacking those as well. But still giving you the ability as an expert to look into that information that's out there, because. In, in all actuality, you're going to run into, and I call them the zero-day apps, um, where one might be released, uh, you know, the day before you you conduct an examination. You're like, what is this app? This is bizarre. So obviously, no one is going to be supporting that. 
um, that particular type of app. But then we start talking about, well, it's an unpopular app. Well, the problem is, is the most unpopular apps are always the ones you're going to run into, right? Um, that, uh, you, you know, you might call up someone and say, hey, you know what, I have this app, I need it supported. And they're like, ah, it's not popular. Well, unfortunately, it's extremely popular to you because that is what you're doing the investigation on, right? So that is really, again, one of those issues of running into the uh, 6.3 million apps that are out there. You just so happen to have the one um, that is not supported. Well, unfortunately, you know, we look at the probabilities. It's pretty high. But if we look at the currently unknown, that's along the lines of the zero day, but currently unknown might be an app that's been out forever, right? But it is not, say, a known app to be a chat app or a popular app that uh, we have people. And like I said, I've done cases with Words with Friends um, that is, uh, you, know, you know, not supported, um, but uh, or supported by other different other apps or uh, Clash of Kings or uh, some of those, say, popular apps, but they are seemingly unpopular to, say, the mobile forensics side. That's the actual, uh, you know, actuality of it is that you quite possibly are going to run into an app that is not directly supported by any tool um, out there. So really, what do we do? So if we look at how do we dig deeper, what do we need to do and looking into, say, the investigation, this is really where we come down to the power of oxygen. Being able to take Oxygen Forensic Detective to do and run the powerful searching, like I would mentioned, within files, across it, utilizing hashes, utilizing regular expressions, um, looking for information uh, across all devices, across cases, across a single device. It's all there and it's all built in and available. But not only that, but using the analytics to quickly uncover plots, to quickly uncover the most common person between multiple devices, to now begin an investigation, to give it out to an investigator to say, we need to find this guy. This is the guy that we're actually looking for. We have all these little guys, but this is the big guy and this is a big player. We need to go out and we need to find that. So by utilizing those powerful analytics within Oxygen Friends of Detective, we can now uncover that information quickly quickly to now go in and stop the threat and be able to uncover things instead of having to do single device, all right, yeah, I think I saw this name, yeah, this name is common, or putting it into another system, pressing a button and hoping that the analytics prove to be true, right? So now being able to do that and identify those common connections and the communications that you can now go in and even dig deeper into it, looking for additional information that you might not have had before. Um, being able to go into what we already support within our tool and find that information, deleted data that um, has been decoded and parsed out of a SQLite database, a JSON string or, or, or a text file or even a file that had been deleted, a picture of that information. Being able to quickly have and analyze that, we support the uh, analysis and decoding of so much information and so much data. But then really what that does is lead us down the road of really digging into the files and into the file system to grab the information or the gold that is within that file system that maybe is not automatically decoded. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at, say, a live situation um, and with, uh, uh, with detective. And we're going to go through and look at this, extracting some additional storage areas, looking into the cloud, right? Now, bringing that information in, starting and look at some of the relationships that we might have in there, identify maybe some possible suspects that we might have based upon a collective analysis. We can conduct a search within some of those files for some information that we might be looking for. Say the investigator has given us some information that we can go in and search across. Uh, the information and really take and formulate timelines, but then we'll look into the file system for information that is not going to be parsed out or is not going to be uh, uh, is not going to be uncovered. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look at some of this information as we go, and we have here ourselves a few minutes to go in and look at actually a live situation. Okay. So I'm going to bring up um, our Oxygen Forensic Detective that we have. 
um, that's listed out here that you see it. And we're just going to, again, formulate kind of a, a, a plan, right? Because I'm looking here, and I know that I have a subject here, Patrick Page, and in the analysis of this, and I look into the file system, the file system area, I quickly find down towards the bottom, there's cloud accounts associated. Because we did an extraction of, say, this Android device, and I see now I have cloud accounts. I can immediately open up these cloud accounts and say, you know what, I know because I was in that webinar, there's additional information addition, you know, that could help within this case. So I simply go in and I take this information and I can go in now and extract the information that's listed out from the cloud based upon the usernames, passwords, as well as any of the information that I have that's built within um, say the, uh, the the user that we have that's listed out over here. Okay, so it gives us that ability to go in and fire up with our cloud extractor and autofill the information that's available. I can now go beginning and say, all right, you know what? Uh, obviously, the interest of time. Um, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to extract these Google, uh, the Google Photos that we might have in here. Um, I'm just going to select some of these other items that I have here. But also, I can also add a cloud service. If it's, say, not on the device, I can add his Dropbox account, the uh, Box account, Facebook, that might not be listed on here. I can add additional accounts. So I'm just going to add a couple of these Google accounts that are listed out here. Um, okay, I have some history, some more photos. I'm going to validate those. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to make sure that the username, password, or the token is is valid. You'll see here uh, listed on the side I get green arrows. I can now press next and I can cycle through all of these different histories and decide what I want to extract from this area. Images, videos, fantastic. I can even associate a date range. You know, if my search warrant states this is what I need to do, I can still do a date range of that. All right, so once I have that information, I simply I'm going to hit next. And now begins the process of downloading this data. You'll see, obviously, it goes quickly just based upon uh, the sheer uh, uh, volume of data. It'll download this information off of the cloud stores uh, where the information is located. Once that information is completely downloaded, it now allows me to um, bring that and either save it off um, as a uh, look at it immediately in my maps. Um, if I have to say because of Google Photos, uh, along with the EXIF data, getting latitude and longitude information, I can now go in and overlay that information immediately on a map if I need to identify that location. All right, so once it's done, I'm going to hit next. It now brings up again. Um, it tells me that the extraction has been uh, completed. All right, it gives me the summary, and I now press next again. It now tells me, all right, I want to open it up in uh, our uh, forensic detective. Or also, um, you know, I want to go into where the actual OCB is, uh, the backup itself, and I want to show the locations in the oxygen forensic map. Whatever I select, it allows me to do that, right? So I'm just going to open it in uh, oxygen forensic detective. So what's great about this, it now then brings that into the case that I've assigned it to. And once that brings it into the case that I have ex assigned it to, it now allows me to do all of my analytics across this. So it's going to extract all the data. It's going to bring it into that case. And now I'm ready to go and look at the analytics to identify, remember, like I said, relationships. Finding the relationships of data. Finding the, um, and, and looking at the different timelines, okay? So once it's done, I'm just going to open the extraction itself. And it's now going to begin and give me the extraction. If you're going to notice, it's going to come in now to the main page. And in my main dashboard, it now has the cloud service built within my human trafficking case. So now I have not only the three devices that I had seen, but now the cloud account that I obtained from Patrick Page. I can immediately go now to the human trafficking, and I'm going to say, you know what? Let's go in and look at the analytics because I want to go in and find the relationships involved. So I immediately can come right here to the social graph. 
in our social graph, it's now going to go in. It's aggregating all of the information, all the data from all these devices, right? It aggregates the information. It brings that information in. It gives me all of these different stores, right? So now you'll see it as it comes up onto the screen. I have that information. But what's great is I can immediately come right up here and show the common contacts. Once I show the common contacts, I immediately am identified with those common contacts right here between, say, those three devices that we had that's listed on here. I have this individual, Humero Flores Romero, that I can immediately now go in and say, boom, I'm going to go and click and show his contact card. And within this area here in his contact card, I now have all the communications that this individual has had in between all of these three devices that are listed out over here. Boom, I can give that to the investigator. They can follow up on this guy because he's not part of it. Um, I can see the additional names that are listed out on this per, uh, person, but this person is identified between those three devices as, again, a common contact with uh, the highest number of the communication that's involved in this uh, particular area. So what's even better is I can immediately go right here. All right, I have this, uh, this particular guy. I look at the dates in the communication. The dates in the communication are telling me, all right, I have from uh, 2015, 5, 2015 to 7 of 2012. Perfect, I have a date range. I can now go into, again, some more analytics within our timeline version. And in my timeline, I can go in and say, all right, now, I'm in the timeline, and based upon this Humero Flores, I'm going to take my date filter down to February, and I'm going to go 2013, and I'm going to put this to 530, and I'm going to say 2015. 2015. So, and 2000. Let's do that again. Two, oops. 2000, okay, and 15, let me do this again, 2000, all right, there, if I can actually type, all right, so once I have 2015, I can now filter down only the record, so now I'm looking at only the information that's based upon this, those dates that I would have here, that's listed out on this particular area, I now have uh, just the geo timeline information that's listed out for this particular individual, and I can immediately go and show this information on my oxy maps that are built in. So now once I have the oxygen maps that will show up, now I have now four items that we're looking at with the cloud storage that you're looking at over here. I would immediately go in and I want to show my common location between two or more of these devices, or even with the cloud store. I immediately go common locations, identify locations within, say, 50 meters and three minutes of each other. It gives me right here, there's eight locations. I can immediately go into those locations, and as I zoom in, I now have the locations of these individuals and exactly what was going on between the Simon Page and Patrick Page. It gives me that information, that detail, um, that they were on a line message or Foursquare check-in in this particular area once I click and I have that information. So now I've identified common locations. These Simon Page and Patrick Page are obviously involved. They know each other based upon these common locations that we found within our map. So now what happens is we're really starting to build a case within and for these particular users, right? So extremely important that we're use, utilizing our analytics that are based upon with timelines, with our social graph, with our different links and stats, with our aggregated contacts. There's so many ways to go in and look at the analytics. We just simply don't have all of that time. But what we want to do is we want to look at the apps, right? Apps, like I've been saying, third-party applications are so important. So again, if we're looking at Patrick Page, we have so many of these apps that are directly parsed out, right? So we have our applications. We have our Facebook Messenger that's listed out. Right? If I click on any of these particular apps, it lists out the information that I have within my app, my view. It recovers the deleted records that are indicated that you have with the trash can. Also right here in the contact area, so we're covering the contacts that we have listed out over. 
that are listed here as well. But I think what's so important to this is a tab that we have. It's called Application Files or Apps. You know there's a ton of different files, right? We have our different files. We have uh, not only our database files, but our write-ahead logs that are located. We list out and bring everything together. So it's not just within that file system. We have everything that's listed in this particular area from that app. So not only the pictures, but also the database files, everything else that's listed out as you see that we have information within this area, right? So not only do we support the, you know, the 300 plus unique apps and 2,000 apps all, or over 2,000 apps altogether, but we're going to parse and decode that information out for you, for the user allowing you to uncover some additional information okay but say say you wanted to go in and you're looking for uh, uh, some additional information not only say within the apps but you want to look over uh, say within uh, this Patrick page um, we can go in and we hit our search and it allows me to go in and search for different items within say the database but also right here it allows me to search within file content so I can search within the file which means I'm going to look in a database files property list files text files XML files within all of that information by utilizing our powerful search like I mentioned we have our keyword list where we can go in and create here's a sample hash here's all the hashes that we've done we've imported the file we have all the hashes that we can get hits on immediately so let's go and look at that here, the sample hash search right here, and we're going to go in and search um, for this particular item right here. Um, I'm going to search this, uh, the keyword list. We'll search this right here. I'm going to find this uh, information out. So now it immediately goes through. It's looking across everything. It looks within our file browser. Immediately we get hits within these hashes. For example, these were uh, CP uh, hashes that you have. We immediately have that information that I can go now and bookmark all of the data. You know, I can bookmark all this information right here. I can now say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go in and give this, these, all of these particular items um, are known hashes um, from CP. I now have these. I bookmark those, add them key evidence, uh, CP hash hit. I now have all of those. They can now be added as with the evidence as part of it. Um, I also have the ability to go in and take these and I can go immediately into the file system in the area where they're located directly off of this with our, with our search functions. So again, extremely robust with the file. And this is just across the database, but if I go and I utilize search within the file itself um, for any kind of, or any using any text, using those other items, it's now going to allow me to search across and locate that information um, utilizing the other items within or built within that search itself. So again, starting off our investigation, now we're searching by finding, say, Humero Flores. Uh, we now go in and find every reference for that Humero Flores, uh, the communication, because again, they might have been using a different third-party app that isn't directly supported. So using that search function can be extremely powerful. Okay, so once we formulate our searches with our different timelines, we're gonna get hits within different files. Okay, so let's look at, remember I said web browsers are extremely important, right? So let's just first look at our default web browser that we have here. So obviously we support it, but I want to point something out. We support per parsing out and getting and recovering deleted data from the application, but let's look here in the application files. Within the application files, it noticed this is where we pulled user data from. But look at, we have other database files that are listed out over here. We also have, if you'll notice, if we go down to the browser where we do parse out, you'll notice our browser DB, 59KB, but we have a write-ahead log where all data is put first. We don't have time to talk about what they are, but we have almost 670KB. What's great is I can go now to this browser. I can open up this in our SQLite viewer. Once I open this up within our SQLite viewer, what it allows us to do now is it's giving us the ability to now recover the deleted records, but it's also going to show us what was in the right ahead log by identifying that. So if we went to, the, say, the bookmarks, I immediately come over to this area, 
and I look down here, it tells me this information came from the right ahead log. Extremely critical that we're parsing that right ahead log of information because, again, this indicates here a recovered record from the free page area. Right, recovered record from the free page area, extremely important. So now we can go and create reports based upon that because it might not have been recovered in, say, the uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, decoded uh, parsing. So being able to use that and identifying, like I said, it came from the right ahead log is crazy. It's very important, and it's, a, it's, a, it's such a great feature. Now looking back into this area here, I want to go and show you exactly if we look at these items. Remember I showed you this, where we have these database files? These are called, these are called, when, if, um, uh, say, WebKit. WebKit's a platform, and inside browsers, anytime you go to a website that has a, say, mobile app look to it, it utilizes this platform for, with the, like the HTML5, it'll look like. So what that does is actually create a database itself and it's going to store data. So let's take a look because those are not directly supported. Those aren't supported by any type of tool. So I'm going to go into, and we're going to look into, say, this Dolphin browser. And if I look into these application files, you'll notice, look it, I have right here, this person utilizes browser to log into their Gmail. And now what? Can we recover some of that Gmail? So if I go into the storage that I have, let's list it out over here, I can go in and I can click on these lower local storage. Again, this isn't parsed out by any tool, this WebKit and this information, because it's too variable. But now I got to say I got a hit. Now look at what we have here. We're going to recover some additional information on here, but now we're actually recovering right here an email address that doesn't exist anywhere. This email address doesn't recover or isn't anywhere within that they utilize this to log into this information within this or for this different table. We can now go into additional uh, the database files within that, or we now can perform a search for this J. Parker 54 to find and recover now fragments, now get additional emails, get resources from that email address based upon because they had utilized that database to log in. And this is just right here giving me the login information, but right here inside the database DB, it actually identifies where the information and data stored from, uh, from the mail. So I can come right here to this main database, open up that main database, and now we've uncovered now fragments of the email, subject lines of emails, the cache messages, contact. You'll notice as I open this up, now we're looking at messages. Now I have the messages that might be cached that's listed out over here. We're talking about HTML that we have. Here's a snippet from it. I can go and convert this column to UTF-8. I can now read all the information. I can report on all the information that's listed out over here, right? I can look at any of these other items that are listed out over here, right? If I had, um, here's the date that's listed out, right? I can convert these columns. I can convert these columns that are listed out over here to say, okay, perfect. I just converted the column. Here's when it was received, 9-6 of 2012. Fantastic. I have now just supported this. And again, we'll convert this column to UTF-8. I converted this column. It's not supported by any tool because, again, too many of the variables that are built in, I don't know what the person's going to log into um, on their browser but they logged into a website, and when they logged into the website, they can now search, and now they have their Google, right? They do Facebook. Facebook can be done like this. So now you have all the information, and you're all ready to go. So there's so much information that um, obviously you can do that we did in just an hour to show when we uncovered additional information that was, say, parsed and decoded, but now we've gone to step further, and now we've uncovered information that no tool is going to parse into code by utilizing the built-in SQLite viewer that we have that's, that's built in. So taking it a step further is going to help you uncover the additional information and help you really find that digital gold to help you solve the cases. Now, how do you start it? Perform a search. You're looking for keywords. You're looking for terms. But once you have a keyword and you have a term found within a database that's not necessarily supported, or found within a text file, a JSON file, XML file, 
you can now view that, you can now create a report, and you can uncover additional information that someone might be hiding from you uh, using a third-party app that's not directly supported because they, don't, they know you don't support it, and you're ready to go. So all of that in a nutshell is built within our Oxygen Forensic Detective. It's an extremely, extremely robust tool that allows you to do so much um, for your investigations. It's critical that you utilize a tool that's not just automating the process for you. We do a fantastic job with that, but really a tool that's going to uncover, show uh, common relationships, be able to show information for multiple people, being able to now uncover information within files that aren't directly supported. And utilizing that tool is in, in your toolbox for mobile forensics is essential, and it's extremely important within uh, the Oxygen Forensics uh, uh, portfolio. So our detective software is available. Uh, you can go in if you want in more information on that. Our website is located on the uh, final slide at uh, www.oxygen-forensic.com. Listed um, on there, you can compare the different products, analyst and detective, what is offered on there as well. If you are a current analyst, you can always upgrade to detective as well. We would love to uh, talk about this more. We have uh, training classes that are available as well where we cover all this information in detail. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you either on a training. Um, I have a couple, uh, I know I'm a little over, but I have a couple of, uh, I'm going to go and look through some of these questions. I will most certainly try and answer all of these. We have a list that I can uh, send out if I don't get to all of them, but uh, let me just go in and uh, and look at some of these as well. I'm going to try and uh, open this up. All right, hold on. All right, there's a, there's quite a few questions, uh, but I'm going to kind of go through from uh, just really quick. Uh, yep, iOS 10 will be supported here in our next release that we have. Uh, Oxygen Cloud Extractor is built into um, Oxygen Forensic Detective. Uh, is Cloud Extractor available? Yes, it is available to non-law enforcement um, uh, users, but again, it's only available within Detective that we have there. Um, Oxygen uh, only for mobile forensics. Now, you can uh, bring in a hard drive image if you wanted to, but again, we decode and parse that information out um, of only mobile uh, forensic profiles that you would have that you uh, look. Um, is text across device indexed? Yeah, so if it's within the database itself, it's extremely fast. Anytime you do search within file, um, it is going to be slower, obviously, because we are going to be looking through the actual files themselves. Um, the, uh, this is recorded, and it will definitely be, um, uh, it'll definitely be uh, uh, available for you as well that you can have. The materials will not be available, uh, but you will uh, be able to review the webinar is, it, uh, itself. We are not phasing out Analyst, no, but Analyst does not include the Cloud Extractor in its uh, CDR. It does not include the Samsung uh, Bypass. A lot of the new features, our Data Scout features, are not included with an Analyst as well. All right. Um, so, yeah, the uh, download link, please just go to the web page uh, so that you can go in and uh, you, you can go to our support that's on the oxygen-forensic.com site as well. Okay. Excellent, and um, I appreciate all of your guys' time. Uh, thank you guys very, very much. And you can go onto our website and compare the differences between analyst and detective, and we are good to go. Uh, this current version of Det detective is available. It's been available. Um, we will have an update to it. We update this thing, uh, uh, detective, uh, every month about. Uh, so that you will have the most current uh, devices supported as well as the most current apps that are out there. All right, if you guys have any other further questions that you, uh, that you have, you can just go ahead and send it to uh, lee.reber at oxygen-forensic.com. I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you guys uh, have that I did not get answered uh, in this webinar. Okay, very good. I appreciate all of your guys' attendance. Thank you so very much for your, um, uh, for, for your I guess, uh, attentiveness during this. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys will download Detective and uh, see and give it a try for yourself. Thank you guys so much.